previous John not uh, organised this with you earlier, Jackers? Yes, he did. Oh, he okay. said, but I, I didn't know what it all meant. You know, oh, okay. That's John wanted to try to get me before, <laughs> and you, you, got too, you got too crowded or whatever, and then he said, can we call you around about 3.30? And I said, closer to 3 would be better. So, yeah, I'm, okay. I'm up for it right now. Fantastic. Well, welcome to the show again, Bear Jackers. Second time you've been on, you know. Yes, I know that. Last time was that. last time was on Skype. Uh, That's correct. Uh, looking wonderful over in India. Where are you now? I'm um, I'm in Rosebank, I think. Lovely. You think? <laughs> at, the, <laughs> at the Camelot Spa. Now, oh. which which Rosebank are we talking? Cape Town or Joburg? No, Joburg. I'm in uh, Joburg. Rosebank. In, in I'm just taking my daughter out to lunch. Yeah. Oh, okay. So we'll she, she took me out to lunch for my birthday. Oh. Your birthday today? Yesterday. Happy birthday. Oh, thank you. Thanks, everybody. Why did you not have that, Knox? I have no idea. Let me see. This is Robin sure. Jackman. He played cricket for England. I know Sir who Robin, Robin Jack- Jackman Sir is. Sir Robin Jack. <laughs> Sir Robin Jackman, Knox. Come on. My apologies, Sir Robin Jackman. There we go. Uh, not at all. <laughs> Uh, lots of interesting things happening in the world of cricket, Jack. First of all, the question on Twitter when we mentioned we were going to be chatting to you. Uh, mm-hmm. Some nice tweets coming through. One of them from, uh, oh, it's gone down the list. Someone wanted to know. Uh, Craig wanted to know. Uh, Robin Jackman, true legend and a pleasure to listen to as a commentator. We all endorse that. Uh, if only he was on Twitter. No, no, no. no Why not? No. I'm not going anywhere near that. It's far too dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> Look, look what's happening to all these people all over the world who are tweeting and twittering and stuff like and that and they all get into trouble getting, nah, in, getting nah. into trouble yeah not uh, clever uh, well SMS in that case will be dangerous as well because that's what KP was doing mm-hmm. have we ever, anyone what, ever what you put in them exactly <laughs> well, has anyone ever found out how they found out about the SMS's he was sending to South Africans I mean did someone in the team drop him or what I don't I, I can't think I was asked that before um, I can't believe that there would have been a, a, um, a that the, the South African guys would have said, "Okay, let's use this," and da 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 da. I mean, I, I, I can't, I can't, I yeah. can't believe that. And, and and nothing has come forward to suggest that they have. I've read all the reports as you have. I'm no nearer the coal face than you from that point of view. Yeah. Um, but I guess you know, it, 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 you've only got to say, "Hey, you must." Did you did you see the? SMS that KP sent about so and so, so and so. You only got to say that. And there's, if there's some journalist in earshot in a hotel or whatever, whatever, mm. you don't know how it can get out. But I, I wouldn't have thought it was a um, a, a, a planned sort of uh, fait accompli to see if they can remove <laughs> KP from, from the team, from the, from the England team. Not yeah. for a minute. The other, the other uh, possibility, of course, being that there's there's clearly some kind of uh, discontent in the dressing room uh, could have been that someone thought well let's go and check his uh, SMS's when he wasn't with his phone and maybe one of his own teammates might have scanned his phone and seen one of his SMS's yeah. Yeah. anyway yeah. that will probably remain a mystery for a while one thing I found very interesting having chatted to yesterday we spoke to Alan Lamb really really good yeah. chat with uh, with Lammy uh, yeah. and also having seen Shane Warne and, and he tweeted a, a comment about uh, because obviously everyone's asking him what his thoughts are being a, a mate of, of Kevin Peterson yeah. at one time. How many yeah. of the uh, the players who you would also consider to be in the same mould, in other words, outspoken, not scared, you know, so have had some kind of controversy around their time, have all come out and basically said he, he definitely crossed the line and they're not automatically jumping to his defence in any way. I haven't found anyone no. who has. No, nor have I. Um, I, I, I don't know. I, it's strange, you know. When I when I first came across Kevin, it was when he came back as an England player. I didn't know even what he looked like until he arrived in South Africa. He had that purple sort of Mohican streak mm. in his hair. He smashed South Africa to all parts in every game that he played. He kept getting hundreds in the ODIs and was um, relatively irritating with his post-match presentation speeches and so on and so forth yeah. and then he mellowed you know then he became a he became a, a fabulous player which he is yeah. and he, he mellowed a great deal and and got himself back to looking normal he got married he and he i found him over the last couple of years or the couple of times that i've come across him um on a cricket field has been really charming you know yeah. and how how are you robin nice to see you da 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 keep up the good work that sort of thing and Yet there seems to be something there, 
uh, Scotty, that, that, that just, that it, I think it might, I, well, I can put it down to his ego. There's some ego there that, that he finds, you know, quite difficult to hide. Yeah. And that seems to be getting him in into hot water from time to time. You know, the, the, there's an old adage in sport, as you know, that no one person is bigger than the game. And there are moments when you think that he's trying to be, um, you know, to the degree that he took on he, he took on uh, the England cricket board, really, with his retirement from limited overs cricket completely, uh, because he wanted to manage his, his career better and therefore add longevity to his test career. That's all very well. But uh, I think deep down he's still expected to be picked for the T20 World Cup, which he wasn't, because that is not the ECB policy. Yeah. And, and when that happened, then it was a sort of wow. I really want to play in that, and I, I, I better, I better make myself available again, which apparently he did on YouTube or something. He yep. did a, I don't know whether you've seen that. I've I'm seen sure it, it yeah. on Sky News. I haven't been onto YouTube to see it, but he, he came out all magnanimous and said that he loves England and he's English and he wants to play for England and he's making himself available again for all three formats of the game. I think he might have missed the boat. I think he's, you know. Yeah. He stirred up enough for them to say enough's enough, Kev. You know we can't we can't keep on this roller coaster. But yeah. I've no idea what he's like in a dressing room. I've never been in a dressing room with him. Um, I don't know whether he's quiet and humble and sits in the corner and gets on with his batting, or whether he. I don't know. It's it's a mystery, and I guess it will come out as you say uh, over the next few months, or in a book, or whatever, whatever. You know. But it's a great disappointment frankly mm. you know as much as as much as South Africans might feel that uh, his absence at Lords is a huge bonus for for us because now they don't have their best player um, as much as they want to feel that it's it's a great tragedy for the game because that, oh. that innings at Headingley was one of the best I've ever seen yeah and you know he, he, he is a showman and 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 he plays like it and they, that's what the, that's what sports need, like Usain Bolt. I mean, what a showman he is. Yeah. And everybody, if, if there were two events in the whole Olympics that's been going on for what seems like months now that you weren't going to miss, it was the 100 metres final and the 200 metres final. Yeah, absolutely. Because of one man, you know. Yeah. And people would leave their offices to go and watch Kevin Peterson back. That's not going to happen now. That's that's what I, the point I was making yesterday. You know, we talk about people like John McEnroe and 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 those kind of characters yep. as as yep. much as yeah, you know, a lot of what they did was was uh, was was sometimes not in the spirit of the game. Mm. They certainly were the people that attracted attention to their sport, and uh, and yeah. I think Kevin Peterson kind of fits into that mold. When I when I was chatting to Alan yesterday as well, I, I asked him to take us back into their dressing room back in that uh, in, in those days. Mm. And uh, particularly with a, a character like Ian Botham, you know, where he mm. confirmed things like <laughs> arriving and going down the order because he's a little hungover for a day, walking out without his bat. You know, he Botham was in the news a lot of the time for what he did off the field as much as what he did on the field. And, and yeah. Alan admitted that he could be a disruptive factor in many instances, but they bent over backwards to accommodate that. So, you know, making him run and do things that the other teammates had to do, they said, look, rather mm. send Botham home and we'll just do it. Otherwise, he's going to screw it up anyway. Do you do you make allowances like that for uh, for a player like Kevin Peterson? How far do you bend over to accommodate the ego or whatever it is? Well, we don't, we don't know how far they've already bent over. Yeah, you know they made him captain, which I thought was a, a really strange decision, uh, only to strip him of the captaincy, um, which he still I think uh, is is quite grumpy about. Yeah, uh, um, um, but we 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 just do not know how many conversations have taken place and how far they've already bent over backwards and eventually it's just crossed the line that they they say look sorry man we've, we've done everything we can they even delayed the you know they delayed the the, the announcement of the, of the squad um uh whilst they carried on talking to him and try, trying to find out and from what i read it's only what i read and you've read uh, that Hugh Morris, who, who's the boss there, has said that he was asked to, cut, to categorically prove that he did not send derogatory SMSs about other members of the side and the captain to the opposition, and he has not proved that. Well, clearly, I mean, if, so, he, if he hadn't so sent them, he would have... Yeah. 
The thing is, I mean, if he goes and says no, and they can go and check up, it's easy to access those tweets if you if you need to, all those SMSs. Mm. So uh, mm. clearly, he must have sent something, and uh, and that's why this, this scenario prevails now. Simon, did you have something for Jack? Yeah, I, his, uh, Jack's previous comment kind of answered my question, but just playing devil's advocate, mm. would it not be better to? St- Keep Peterson in the side for that final test. Do what they got to do. Salvage a series draw and deal with it afterwards. You know, again, we don't know mm. how many lines he's crossed. Yeah. And therefore, maybe it is end of tether stuff, you know. And they've said, look, we, we, we just can't do that. And it's not... The team ethic has been, since Flower and Strauss got together, the team ethic has been team first, individuals after. Which isn't wrong. And which, which is dead right. Yeah. Um, and therefore, they, they are, what they're, all they're doing is they're carrying out the company policy, if you like, and you, you, can't, you can't knock that. Yeah. All right, before we let you go, Jack, as I say, you can get to your, uh, to your lunch. Uh, just finally, uh, do you think then, now, with, without Peterson, or even, I mean, with Peterson, do you still back South Africa? You've got a great record at Lords lately. Uh, to uh, to go and wrap the series up two nothing and uh, and go to number one in the world. Yeah, I, I, I do. Um, I, I I think that they whether they win the test match or not, I'm not quite sure. It, again, we we just need to bat well again. Uh-huh. Um, you, you know, it, it, it is about England have got to get 20 wickets, and if if, if South Africa can stop them getting 20 wickets, then they they won't lose the test match and they might win it. And if they don't, if they draw or win, then they win the series, which is which will but what they'll do and set out to do. Yeah. I don't think that they will go into the game in a negative way. They'll go into the game like any other Test match to look to win it. Yeah. Just as I thought it was a great. I don't know whether you saw the post-match presentation after Headingley, mm. uh, where Smith had declared and mm. sent England two thirty-nine or whatever, and Peterson came out and everyone was starting to shift around in their seats because they went off at seven and over <laughs> yeah. and then, then it fell into a draw as we all anticipated it would and at the post-match presentation Atherton's last question Michael Atherton's last question to Graham was uh, will you be going into the Lord's Test to look to win it or defend uh, the lead that you have and, and Graham very cleverly said I think I've made our intentions very clear this afternoon. Absolutely. Uh, mm-hmm. It made me very which nervous was, as well. Which was a great, which <laughs> yeah. was a great answer. Yeah. So um, they'll, they'll regroup. Peterson will be a word that maybe um, should not be mentioned in the dressing room because they've got other things to focus for the time being. They've got other things to focus on. It's a test match. Here are the opposition. Let's go out and play proper cricket. And if we win the game, fantastic. If we don't and we only draw it, it's, uh, it's still a good result. Johnny Besto, he's David's son, right? David, yeah. yeah. David played here for quite a, quite a few years, didn't he, in South yeah. Africa? Yeah, yeah, mm. he did. Okay. Bluey. Bluey, they used to call him, the red hair. The red hair yeah. as well. Okay, yeah. keeper, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, yeah. we could keep a batsman for Yorkshire. Yeah. Okay. I, toured, I toured the West Indies with him. Okay, there we go, David yeah. Besto. Yeah. Very interesting character. Uh, I think he actually came out and played out just the same time as Broad's dad, uh, Chris. He did. I think he played in in in. Uh, I think he played for Free, Free State, State or something like that. Yeah, yeah I think they were out sure. at the same time. I'm not sure. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Jack, it's nice catching up with you as always. Always speak a lot of cricketing sense. We love watching you on the... Uh, are you doing the panel this weekend uh, yeah, for the test? Yeah, I'll be there the whole week, yeah. We look nice. forward to watching you there as well and okay, uh, buddy. love listening to you commentate as well. Thanks a lot and uh, enjoy the Bye rest then. of your lunch. Thanks, bud. Cheers, bud. Well. Bye-bye. Bye. There we go. Robin Jackman. Is he Sir Robin Jackman? No, I made that up. Everyone's writing <laughs> Sir Robin Jackman but I think now. It's quite cool. It's so funny. He's going to start getting messages going, <laughs> Sir we're united. <laughs> I was reading some of these tweets. <laughs> I love the way Sir Robin Jackman refers to South Africa as we. He's been freaking playing here, Craig, uh, for like forever. <laughs> Sir Robin. <laughs> when did he play for England? In the 70s, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I was in the 70s and uh, I mean, he played for province. Basically, he's been in the country, I think, longer than he's uh, been alive. Well, not longer than he's been alive, but <laughs> for more than half Another of his life. brilliant Scott comment there. <laughs> oh, gee, whatever. Let me just go to music. We the best on three. One, two, three. We the best. 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. Mondays to Fridays live on balls.co.za. Balls.co.za.